Hi there people, hope you're all coping well with uh, lockdown and everything. Right, I'm just going to carry on with this testing. I managed to to grab an oscilloscope, a wee function generator thing, but I didn't really get a power supply as such. So I'm going to have to make one. I've got this old uh, charger. And I'm going to I got a solder as well, so I'm going to solder it onto these to get a good connection. Right, so I've got this old charger here. I was going to, I was considering using the mains, but I thought I might be a, a bit too dangerous. So I don't know if you can see that there. Here. This is going to give me a 20 volt DC supply out of that. And uh, you still have to be careful with these. I mean, see when computers start, they draw in a lot of current. And uh, just if you're careful, you should be fine. Right, uh, what else was I going to say there? So I'm going to make that power supply up then. We're going to look at put resistors and capacitors and things across there. Have a wee look at them. And then use this wee board as well courtesy of West Logan College now right so once I've done that well we're going to look at just two or three circuits work out what we think the voltage should be and then measure it and see what happens uh, I haven't got an analogue multimeter but we'll talk about the errors and stuff that can occur with using them. Then I'm, I've got an oscilloscope and a function generator so I'm going to have a look at uh, alternating current and uh, we'll look at how to measure it, how to find the frequency and, uh, and we'll talk about errors with the oscilloscope as well. You get a digital oscilloscope or a, an analog oscilloscope and I'll we'll talk about how they work and uh, where they can go wrong at times and then I'll do a kind of quick summary okay hi there people uh, it's a bit later in the day just now as I've had to put a light in here as you can probably see it's a bit different uh, the reason being when I I showed you that old laptop charger I had and I was going to change that into a power supply well, it turns out when I was uh, trying to grab stuff from uh, the college before I left, I grabbed this stuff. I thought it was solder, but it was actually uh, tinned copper. But anyway, I phoned one of my plumber friends and uh, he managed to drop off some solder a wee while ago. So I've managed to turn that charger into a wee 20 volt power supply. As I was doing that though, it did occur to me that uh, I know you're sitting about the house with a lot of you, a lot of you obviously working still but what do they say the devil makes work for idle hands now I warn you do not attempt to make a power supply in your house out of a laptop charger uh, it can it only takes one twentieth of an amp to kill you and this thing will deliver two and a half amps at 20 volts it might seem like a small voltage but no it's, it's dangerous and I had to use a solder on stuff to get it working properly and uh, so I implore you and advise you please do not try this at home okay thanks right so what I've done is I've got this uh, wee box from the college it's got resistors and stuff and I don't even know what these are so what I'm going to do is uh, go through with you and we'll find out what the resistors are uh, and we'll, sh we'll uh, measure it on the digital multimeter here now just so I was talking about this is the the thing that I've been talking about the, and what I've got here is red is your feed or your live and I've got blue as your neutral because I couldn't find a black cable 
Anyway, so I'm going to switch this on. As I say, it's very dangerous mucking about with electronics. So please don't do this. Anyway, this was a, it's supposed to be a 20 volt supply. I've got this set at 200 volts. So, uh, because if it's set at 20 volts, it'll, it'll, it'll go off the scale, I suppose. So anyway, here goes, see what happens. Hmm, not very much. Is that the right plug? Right, so we'll have a wee look at that. I suppose it would help if I put the, the cables in. <laughs> right, so here we go. There's your neutral and live. There we go. It's seen 21.2 volts coming from that. So what I'm going to do is, uh, as part of uh, looking at testing circuits and things, as I say, I don't even know what these are. So what I'm going to do is I'll write down in paper. In fact, uh, what we'll do is we'll take readings and then from the readings we'll be able to work out what the resistances are in this, this wee circuit here. Okay, cheers. Right, looking at this circuit here, we have supply here, okay. This is a 20 volts. That was from that charger thing. Well, 21.3. Said it was supposed to be 20, but not quite as accurate. Right now, what we've got here is we've got a path here, okay, it splits into a parallel circuit, recombines, and obviously there's one resistor here and another resistor here, then it recombines into a series circuit until we get this last point here. So, I'm expecting, when I check the voltage from here to here, it should be the full 20 volts. Right, there we go. That's right. And as we kind of move back, oops, each resistor is going to steal a bit of the voltage. There we go. 18.7. I'm expecting the voltage here to be lower. 12.7 what we got here 12.7 obviously that should be 12.7 as well remember it's the same if you have a voltage here across here it'll, uh, when you have a parallel circuit you get the same voltage over each branch now from these uh, what I'm going to I'll just quickly run through that again so we have oops don't you can see that 21. Point, Three or four volts, can't bloody hell. There we go. So at one point three, a four. After this first resistor here, we have eighteen point seven. So it's lost about two point six volts or something like that. Over here, we're doing at twelve point seven. So what's that? 18, 12, so there's 6 volts being lost over there and this is going to be the same voltage across both these resistors as it was there hopefully, yep excellent, right so what I'm doing here then is I've taken these wee cables out at the start so that's a broken circuit now and now what I can do is I can check the current in this and I've got that set to 20 milliamps so let's see yep that's right that's looking at 17.23 milliamps okay right there's actually 
something I forgot to do. I forgot to take the current for these both these branches here. I just took the current for the whole circuit. Now I came back in to check that and for some reason this blooming meter doesn't seem to be reading the, the current anymore. I don't know what's going on. I'm wondering if I've somehow blown the fuse in there. I replaced the battery in it and it's actually quite annoying but the voltage function still seems to be working I don't know what's going on here yep so what I'm going to do I could uh, just set this you can actually measure the resistance for this but that would be too easy so what I'm going to do Take, disconnect this now. If I can get the voltage drop across here, yeah, that's so. This is 15.9 now, before it was 12.7. So we can use that information to work out the size of the, the other resistors, okay? Right, so we're going to work out the the resistors in this. So that's the circuit there. So drawing that out on here, that would be, we'll do it, do it this way. We'll do it like that. So we've got this resistance here. Can you see, whoops, can you see that? Oops, this resistance here is this one. And another resistor. And then it splits into two, like that. I'll we'll call this R1, R2, R3 and R4. Right, what information do we know? We worked out that from here to here, at this point there was 21.3 volts there. Now, at this junction here, is 18.7 volts, and at this junction here, what was it? 12.7 volts. Right, and the current was 17.23 milliamps. That should be 18. So what we do first is we look at the the voltage drop over each resistor here and over this this whole branch. That's because it's a parallel circuit, the voltage over here will be exactly the same as the voltage over there. And always bear in mind uh, if you put in 17.23 milliamps at this end, you must get 17.23 milliamps out of this end. Now one thing is because I don't know what was going on with the multimeter I couldn't find individual branch currents but what I am going to be able to do is use the properties of circuits to work out these two resistors here. Now the first thing we're going to do is work out the total resistance of the whole system here, which was so the RT is going to be the voltage divided by the current, and that was what was it again? 21.3 divided by 17.23 milliamps. Remember, a milliamp, it's kind of like dividing that number by a thousand. In fact, that's just one zero there. So it's like one, two, three. 
that's 0 0.01723 and that works out at 1229.8 or 1230 ohms now that is the resistance of the whole circuit there now what I want to do is work out then what the individual resistance is for R1, say, right? So let's find out what R1 is. R1 equals this voltage drop over here. Right, yeah, I forgot to put these voltage drops in here. The difference between 21.3 and 18.7 is 2.7 volts. The difference over here is 12.7, 18.7, that's going to be 6 volts. And obviously 12.7 volts across there. So to work at R1, we're looking at 2.6 volts divided by 0 0.01723. That works out at 150 ohms. So that's 150. R2 is equal to 6 volts that drop over there divided by the current and that works out at 350 ohms cool and then we'll call this RP for R parallel RP equals the voltage drop over the two branches here which is 12.7 volts divided by 0 0.01723 which works out at 737 ohms now it's it's a bit harder to work these out because if we don't know the values of these resistors we're not sure how the, the current is getting split down these uh, paths here so what I did is I disconnected see this and made this just another series connection along there which will still be the 12.7 volts now and when I disconnected that it turns out that this voltage changed to 15.9 volts right so then I can work out R4 now 15.9 divided by 0 0.01723 because there's only one path now the same current is going to be going through there and that works out at 922.8 ohms now we know that the parallel resistance was 737 and we know one of these resistors is 922.8 so Remember the, oh you had to, I can, can you see that? That's not so good, I didn't realise you can see that there, watch a second. Right I'll quickly go through that, what I've done there is I've found the resistance of this using the current and the voltage drop. Again I've done the same thing here, the 6 volts voltage drop and the current gives you 3 50 ohms. Now we found out the resistance of this whole branch together and then what I've done is I've found out the resistance of just one branch and I want to work out a way of working out this, uh, this resistor here. We know that when when you do a parallel circuit when you add the resistances of a parallel circuit you use this equation here 1 over RP equals 1 over, in this case will be R3 plus 1 over R4 which is going to be 1 over the total resistance 
which equals 1 over r3 plus 1 over 922.8 ohms. Then what I would do there is I would say 1 over r3 equals, and if I'm moving this across to that side, I would have to subtract that number from there and subtract it from this number. So that's 1 over 737 minus 1 over 922.8. Can you see that there? I hope so. And then that would work out at 1 divided by 737. I'll put it over here. So it's 1 over R3 equals 0.00137. See? Minus this value here which is 0 0.00108 2 seconds and that equals so that, I don't know if you can you see that I'm running a room here I'll do it over here somewhere I'll do it up here. So that means 1 over R3 equals 0.00277. And to find R3, if that's 1 over R3, you can flip that over like that. So R3 is equal to 1 divided by 0 0.00277. And that works out at... Three thousand six hundred and ten ohms. So that's has worked out all these resistances. So R four is going to be nine two two point eight. In real life, you don't get resistors. I know this was a real experiment, but the resistors are uh, you don't really get random say resistors like that. They're usually in uh, one point eight kilo ohms or. 1 kilo ohm or 1.2 or something like that. Right, so we've got that there. Now we can check this. Remember, if we do have this circuit then, RP, or 1 over RP equals 1 over R1 plus, in this case it's 3, 1 over R4, sorry. And you use cross multiplication. And once you do that, you get RP equals R3 times R4 divided by R3 plus R4. We have done this quite a few times in class, so you should be familiar with what I'm doing here. And let's work this out then. So what we're going to get is 922.8 times 3610 divided by 922.8 plus 3610 and hopefully that should be quite close to that 737 or hopefully bang on which is 922.8 times 3610 divided by 922.8 plus 3610 oops that works out at 735 ohms so, it's pretty close, cool. so we've just confirmed that what we did was right. And that is a, a kind of brief description of uh, how we use a multimeter and how you work out things from that. And multimeters, you use that in testing and measurement constantly. Constantly. Okay, thanks for listening. And I'll go on to, I'm going to have a look at oscilloscopes next